Uh, g'day everyone, Nick Ryan here from the Riedel Drinks Lab at the Good Food and Wine Show. Well, I think I used to be, and I hope I still am, but um, again, here we are in late September 2021 and another year where we haven't been able to get together and have the fun that we do at the Good Food and Wine Show normally, but I've got something really interesting for you guys to have a look at today. This year was going to be the 21st birthday celebrations of the Good Food and Wine Show, and as part of that, um, a special wine had been made uh, with care, detail, precision, and something that was going to be, you know, something that we could all celebrate making this 21st year milestone of the Good Food and Wine Show. We didn't get to have the shows, but we still have the wine. So, next year you'll see the wine at the Good Food and Wine Show, but we're giving everyone the opportunity to maybe have a look at it even sooner. For those of you amongst, uh, out there, who don't quite have the patience to wait for next year's shows, like me, um, we're going to give you a chance to get into this 21st birthday year wine in our 21st year. There it is. We're going to taste it in a minute. I'm going to taste it with the guy who made it. So Jeff Thompson, not that Jeff Thompson, the <laughs> other Jeff Thompson, this man's shoulders actually are still attached um, <laughs> to the rest of his body. Just the man at Grounded Crew, based in McLaren Vale, who's behind this wine, and it came from a conversation with a couple of the guys at the Good Food and Wine Show on an afternoon of one or two many, one or two, or too many um, glasses of wine, is, which is, you know, is the origin of this idea, which is this wine, um, which is a really interesting blend of varieties and regions. We'll talk a little bit about it as I pour, but Jeff, say good day to everyone out there and tell us a little bit about Grounded Crew. Thanks Nick, yeah, no, it's a pleasure to be here today and uh, having a chat about our wine for the Good Food and Wine celebration. Um, Grounded Crew is our family business. We're based in McLaren Vale and um, we've been, I've been making wine for a long time, but had our own business for eight years and launched our brand in 2017. Um, yeah, we work with vineyards across McLaren Vale, the Adelaide Hills and Langhorne Creek, three beautiful regions that we think talk to each other, given their proximities, but also exhibit, um, you know, great expre different expressions of varieties as well. So that's why I love working from those three regions. Yeah, and for a lot of people that might not have spent time in these places, and shame on you if you haven't, but they are basically all neighbouring each other. So the, the hills and the, the elevated part of the Mount Lofty Range, directly due east of where we are pretty much right now, Jeff. But by the way, we're actually at the Royal Adelaide Wine Show. I'm busy judging here all this week and just, just popped in to show me the wine. So we are in Adelaide. Um, so the Adelaide Hills are directly east of us up in the Mount Lofty Ranges. Down to the south of us where we are here, about another half an hour, 40 minutes from where we are right here, down to McLaren Vale. And then just sort of between the two and down the back slope of the Adelaide Hills down towards Lake Alexandrina is um, Langhorne Creek, one of the great underrated uh, wine regions of the world. I love Langhorne Creek, it's a fabulous place. Absolutely. I love all three of those places. And yeah, Langhorne Creek's also got wonderful history as well, like beautiful old vines down there. Well, yeah, we had this you know, side track now, but we had a look at the um, at our judges dinner on Tuesday night where we all take on fancy wines and talk about how good we all are. <laughs> um, we had the 1971 Saltram Natala. Yep. Shiraz Cabernet, in amazing nick. Same age as I am and in much better condition than I <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful wine. In, um, so yeah, the ageability of the wines yeah. at Langhorne Creek is yeah. something phenomenal. 100%. So, this is a really interesting thing. I really like the wine. There's this lovely sort of dark berry lift coming up through the wine. There's a bucket there, everyone. I'm not just spitting off to <laughs> Don't show the bucket, it's gross. But I'm not just spitting onto the floor. Um, yeah, that lovely sort of dark cherry sort of characters to the wine. There's a plushness and a, and a silkiness on the palate. Really smart, and then just tightens up really nice mm -hmm. with these fine, almost sort of cocoa dust tannins mm -hmm. on the wine. It really tapers it nicely, it shapes it beautifully. Summed it up really beautifully. Seriously, yeah, yeah. seriously good booze, yeah. Jeff. Thank you. As, as, as a booze made especially to celebrate 21 years of Good Food and Wine Show should be, yeah. wouldn't you? Not every day that an event like this makes 21 years, so you're going to have a wine. See, if you're going to call yourself a Good Food and Wine Show, you're going to make a wine to celebrate a 21st birthday. It wants yeah. to be a bloody good wine. Yep. 
Otherwise, what, what credibility have you got? So at least we, we've ticked that box. Thank you. Seriously, bloody good wine. Tell us a little bit about the thinking behind, like I said, multi-regional, yep. multi-varietal blend. So tell us a little bit about how, you know, the thinking behind it. So with, um, you know, with the scope of putting a wine together, it was basically open for us to, uh, to look at what we bring in each year and, and basically have a play on the bench. And so we got basically all of our red parcels in from 2020 and, um, and had them on the bench and had to think about how do we want to create something that's beyond just the McLaren Vale Shiraz or just beyond a Shiraz Cabernet. We wanted something that was not singular varietal. We wanted something that was going to stretch the spectrum for food friendliness in terms yep. of aromas and flavors and, and texture. That. Um, it's got a, to me, it's got a beautiful dark brooding component, but then there's a really lovely lift and, and brightness over the yep. top. And um, to me, that's going to make this wine, A, it's going to age really well. So it's not, it's not a super bright, really young red style, but it's also got some approachability as we stand here. Um, and then that nuance of the Malbec over the top with this, with this blue fruit and a little bit of violet and the Pinot Noir providing some prettiness and some fineness and, and a nice acid line as well. I'll tell you a little bit about Malbec. Um, one of the things, one of the little secret behind the scenes secrets from the wine show here this week, um, the beauty of Malbec as a variety. A lot of people in this room really love um, Malbec. Was a, there was a panel that had to judge um, a red blends class, so they had 50 wines, and they bring about six or seven wines out to talk about for, for gold medals. They ended up getting four gold medals out of that class, this red blends class. Every single one of those red blends, the one common theme through all of them was a bit of Malbec. So it's become this sort of buzzword of the wine show the last few days that they're Malbec, the secret weapon yeah. in a blend, and just the lift it can it give. Is give the wine is yeah. um, is significant and you yeah. see it at, at work here in this as well. Yeah, that's no, amazing. So this, this wine is um, is 70% Shiraz from McLaren Bale and some of that is off our old vine vineyard um, on Ingleby Road, McLaren Flat. And then 15% Cabernet, which is which is off our old vines, yep. Ingleby Road, McLaren Flat. And then we jump to um, some 5% component of Grenache, which is from Selix Hill down yep. at the southern end. Um, around 20 year old. Near vines. the Great Victory Hotel. Oh, exactly right. And, um, Funny that I, I, I base my knowledge on where vineyards are based <laughs> on their proximity to certain pubs. <laughs> and then 5% um, Pinot Noir from, uh, from Woodside. Yep. And the then, hills. And 5% Malbec from Mangan Creek. So we've got those three regions. We've got the, the range of varieties, five varieties, certainly Shiraz based and, and, a, and a nice dose of Cabernet. But then we've got these other other components providing those nuances of, of aroma and flavour. And it really is one well, of those great examples of the most successful blends are always greater than the sum of their parts. This is not just a yep. bit of Shiraz, a bit of Grenache, a bit of Cabernet, a bit of Malbec, a bit of Pinot, all sort of put in together. It's actually by coming together, it's made a whole different yep. um, entity. And it is, you know, it, it's a cliche to say these things are greater than some of their parts, but it really is the case in this wine here. And you know, we're saying this is a wine to celebrate the twenty-first birthday. But we, we've talked about um, you know the structure of this wine, and, and it will age mm -hmm. really nicely. I mean, this is a wine that's going to breeze through the twenty-fifth birthday of the Good Food and Wine yep. Show. It's going to be around drinking well for the thirtieth birthday of the Good Food and Wine Show. Yep. So if you are going to look at getting some of this, want to stash some in the cellar, it is. You know, it's a it's a really good proposition for the cellar. Now, I deliberately haven't asked what the deal is here in terms of how it's getting sold. I think the, you know, the guys on at the Good Food and Wine Show are going to let everyone know how that all works. But the single most important question, and I don't know the answer, so you'll see genuine reaction on my face when Jeff tells me how much this wine is going to is going to cost us. Well, as, um, as we were planned for the shows, we were going to um, have a, a price of $30 a bottle. And then with people joining our mailing list, we were going to bring that down to 21. So it's 21 bucks Seriously? for 21 years. Okay. Yeah. It's nuts. It's a dollar for every year of the good yeah. food and wine show. So we want to um, incentivize people to, to come along and, and have a taste and, and, and find hopefully the, the quality that you're talking um, and, and the, you know, the pleasure that they can have from the wine. And, Seriously, uh, that is yeah. um, no word of a lie. That is, that is, that's a dumb price. That's a ridiculously good price. 21 bucks. A bottle for that is um, seriously good. First sale goes to me. For the so, good food, my So, yeah, so what, what's left for those of you? Uh, 
<laughs> friends of the Good Food and Wine Show, um, it is in one small way your chance to just get a little bit of you know the fun and the joy and the, the camaraderie of the Good Food and Wine Show that we've missed for two years now, and, and, and we can't wait to all get back together and to to get around the country again and to, to do what we do so well at the show and, and, and to see everyone. Really looking forward to it. Next year, yep, touch it. bloody wood. Next year, bigger and better than ever to, to roll out the old entertainment cliche. But yep. um, there'll be some of this wine around if it doesn't go all, <laughs> all go before then, but maybe we'll start making 22nd birthday ones and 23rd <laughs> birthday ones. Because if they're as good as this, Jeff can do as good a job on those as he's done on this. We'll be really happy. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Happy Cheers. 21st birthday of the Good Food and Wine Show. Absolutely. See everyone in 2022. Cheers. Cheers.